I'm Kate Jewell, and I'm back again, continuing my journey through the world of My Hero Academia three episodes at a time. Now, when we last left off, Midoriya had triumphantly taken the hero name of Deku during a training exercise that saw him pitted against his old childhood friend turned bully and rival, Katsuki. Or should I say Bakugo? Wait, did I miss something, or does everyone not get big moments for them picking their superhero name? I mean, I guess that makes sense if you were basically born with these powers and have had a lifetime to think about naming and costumes. Bakugo, as far as I know, means burst in kanji, which makes sense for a person with literal explosion powers. Episode 7 actually ends up digging much deeper into Bakugo and what exactly drove a wedge between him and Deku. It seems that when they were younger, Midori actually looked up to Katsuki a lot. He was everything he wasn't, mainly confident, but over time, that confidence mutated into the sinful kind of pride after all the people around him would always tell him how great he was and what an amazing hero he would be someday, and you can only hear that for so long before you eventually start believing it. Eventually, he started taking a lot of joy in belittling poor, powerless Midoriya, yet despite all of that, Deku just kind of took it in good humor. Why, we even see a particular moment from their childhood wherein Katsuki suffered what could have been a very nasty fall, yet even with all the crap that he slung at him, Midoriya still rushed on in to try and help him out, which only made Katsuki anger at the idea that someone as weak as Midoriya could help someone as strong as him. It's that very same anger that drives Bakugo to try and beat Deku during their first trial to prove that he's still better even if his childhood friend is now packing a godlike quirk. So much to the point he seems to forget that this is a team-based contest which only gives Deku and his teammate Uraraka an edge. Deku thinks that if he can play cat and mouse with his old bully long enough, his teammate can actually grab the bomb and win. This leads to a rather interesting little standoff between E-Day, which brings to mind all those questions about what power would ultimately win in the fight between flight and super speed. Now even though Bakugo wants to beat the living hell out of Deku to prove his worth, All Might notes that he's not trying to kill him, he's just talking a big game. That's still not to say he couldn't kill everyone else on the training course by accident. After all, his quirk in this episode is described as sweating nitroglycerin. Which, if you know anything about the history of Nitro deaths, that's absolutely insane. Seriously, Katsuki must have an amazing antiperspirant for every day. It's while well, Bakugo gets chewed out by All Might, Deku concocts a plan that might actually just help him and his partner partner win, and I must say it's pretty smart, and not just in the whole Midori is a super fanboy and knows all the moves of all the other heroes kind of way. No, Midoriya wins by basically knowing himself and his own limitations. Deku calls out Katsuki for one big climactic clash, but he never actually intended of turning his own powers against him, instead only reflecting Bakugo's own explosive power. This in turn allows Uraraka to get a leg up on the competition and actually manage to win the test. Though, not that you would be able to tell is by the time it's all over, she's puking her guts out from overexerting herself, and Deku is once again half dead from tapping into his quirk. It's also finally here too, Bakugo starts to learn the truth about Deku's quirk and how every time he uses it, he half kills himself. Yeah, so he wasn't actually lying to him or speaking down to him like Katsuki thought this whole time. Then again, as we'll discover over these three episodes, Katsuki's pretty good at compartmentalizing information he doesn't like. And wouldn't you know it, as the next episode begins, Bakugo falls further and further into despair as the other students begin to take the field for their version of the same test and showcase just how much more powerful and disciplined they are than him. It's also here too we discover in this episode not all the students got into the school the same way. Some came via special recommendation because they're just so damn powerful already before basic training. Like the super intelligent Momo who was able to pretty much dissect everything that Katsuki did wrong in the last assignment by chasing his personal vendetta. Well, Ide on the other hand did better than anyone else in the test because well he actually buckled down and did his job. And of of course, there's Todoroki, an incredibly powerful young hero whose quirk allows him to control both fire and ice simultaneously, easily allowing him and his teammate to steamroll the competition, even though his partner was a dude who could create body parts out of tentacles? Gross. Their rival team also included an invisible girl, way to go Japan, being able to fetishize a 15-year-old we can't actually see, oh Japan, you so Japan, and another guy who looks exactly like Luke Skywalker, I thought it was weird that the train station in episode 1 was called Tatooine Station, but now I know that this is just gonna keep happening, right? And the rest of the episode pretty much plays out like that as we get to see more two-person teams made up of other heroes showcasing their powers. There's an electricity guy who likes 
tracksuit, so you know I'm a fan of him, and a frog girl named Sue, who, before I even watched this show, I knew people loved her just by the sheer amount of fan art I've seen online. I should also probably mention two big ups for the soundtrack here. Wow, there are some real bangers I dig it. I'm gonna be adding these to my playlist soon, I'm sure of it. When class is over, we're once again reminded that All Might can only keep his hero form for a short amount of time, which makes teaching more stressful than it normally is. Also, it turns out there's actually a handful of people at UA who are aware of his situation, but even less people who are actually aware of the true nature of One for All. Midoriya will also have to recover from his own injuries this time around as to not overtax his stamina. Getting hurt sucks, but once again, Deku's naturally heroic aptitude has impressed his whole class, maybe even made him a couple friends along the way. As far as the whole high school drama part of the show goes, I like to see that we're already starting to see cliques begin to form in Class 1A, like the bird guy who's too cool for school and gets read the riot act by an overzealous E-Day for daring to sit on his desk. Now when Midoriya hears that Katsuki has ran off, he decides to chase after him. I don't know how I thought this scene was gonna go, but it totally went the other way. It's less, hey don't leave cause I'm still kind to your friend, and more, hey you can't leave until I beat you cause that's the only way I'm gonna feel like a real hero. Deku even reveals more than he probably should have about how he got his quirk and its own connection to All Might. Though, more on that one later. Bakugo doesn't really know how to take any of this, and it's clear that he's feeling a lot right now, that he's not used to being a small fish in a big pond, but ultimately he does choose to stay, even vowing to be bigger than All Might, who himself tries to do his due diligence as a teacher, only to discover that Bakugo is still very much motivated, even though he didn't look like he was before. And from there we move into Episode 9, where Midoriya and the other students of UA learn firsthand about the media side of being a superhero. Granted, mostly they just want to hear about All Might and how the biggest celeb in the world is faring as a teacher. It's also here too in this episode we discover the school has quite an impressive defensive array to make sure no one without a pass can actually enter, though I'm sure nothing is ever as airtight as it seems, especially in stories like these. Now the next order of school business for Class 1A is picking an official class rep. Everyone wants the job because it means more eyes will be on you and the better chance that you'll get picked up by a superhero agency. Is this a uniquely Japanese thing? Because I know even though I've been out of school for a while now, my school certainly didn't do this kind of thing. Naturally, Ide wants the job for himself because he just exudes Japanese middle management type. But again, because he's such a stickler for rules and tradition and protocol, he decides that they should hold a class vote, which ends up backfiring as most people only voted for themselves. But hey, guess what? In a surprise twist, the main character, Midoriya of all people, ends up getting the job. Hey, go figure. Now that being said, the bulk of this episode really is about Ide. Turns out his family actually operates one of those superhero agencies we just heard about, and his brother is actually a rich and famous superhero in his own right, meaning Ide comes from money on top of everything else. Now when the media ends up storming the school gates, it leads to a massive panic. Students probably would have trampled each other to death were it not for the quick thinking of Ide who manages to take charge and calm everyone else down. Kinda like a real deal leader would, huh? Midoriya instantly recognizes this and gives the job of rep to the person who was always the most deserving of it. It's a good character moment for both heroes as it shows Deku is humble and quick to reward people and that Ide is also pretty good. A pretty good judge of character as he voted for Midoriya over himself only to actually be rewarded for it. But how did the press get into the school in the first place? Well, a villain of course showing off their power and trying to put the fear into the UA teachers. And speaking of teachers, All Might is having a hard time pushing his hero form to help fight crime while also having enough energy left in the tank to teach. It seems that he's only been getting weaker after passing his quirk on to Midoriya. He's also not crazy that Midoriya shared their secret with Bakugo. Luckily, Katsuki is so prideful he didn't believe him, and after all, if the rest of the world was ever to find out that the power of All Might was transferable, there's no telling what horrible people would come out of the woodwork to try and claim said power for themselves. Now the next big test for the kids is rescue training. A bus allows for a chance for everyone to compare quirks. It seems that some are actually more desirable than others in this world, mainly because they're much flashier there and by being much more marketable. In a twist, Midori was not expecting, it's actually Bakugo who ends 
ends up getting teased by the other kids for being such an incorrigible hothead. Helping lead this test is Space Hero 13, a big Stay Puff Marshmallow woman who's built an entire facility to help recreate natural disaster situations. Everyone says it looks like a theme park and its initials just so happen to be the very same as Universal Studios Japan. You know, I'm a bit of a theme park junkie myself and I was not expecting this direct a reference. Before the test can even begin proper though, the hand-themed super villain who we saw in the post credit, yes this show has post credits, thank you for telling me everyone, and their minions decide to crash the meeting as the episode ends. And so there you have it, three more episodes of My Hero Academia, and once again I'm enjoying what I'm seeing here. In nine episodes I appreciate all the high school drama stuff almost as much as the superhero stuff, and I hope that continues. It's two great flavors that work well together and always have. I'm also really enjoying the Focus Piece episodes, and I hope we get to see a lot more of that heading forward. And then of course you have the cherry on top of all of it, and that is the introduction of actual real-world supervillains. I do wonder, how do they work in this world, especially considering that superheroes basically seem to be the backbone of everything in this society. So, until next time everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye